Hey folks, hope you are all doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. Uh, the last video on my main channel was on making these chisel handles. They turned out great. Very, <laughs> they turned out great. No pun intended. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, so these, these chisels right here are Cobalt brand and they do the job for me. They're not the greatest tool steel in the world, but they do the job for me and I didn't spend a ton of money on them either. So you obviously get what you pay for in that regard as far as tool steel goes. Um, but this is my favorite one for a couple reasons. Number one, it's got the most figure in it right there. Not a tremendous amount of figure. There is a, bad, a dead spot over there, but it does have quite a bit of figure. And of course I oriented the chisel's handle so you see the figure while it's on the rack. Um, this is my favorite one. Obviously the, the rings turned out pretty good, but uh, it's a dovetail chisel homemade dovetail chisel, I guess, or I guess you say modified chisel to make it a dovetail chisel. This is a footprint brand quarter inch chisel that I took to my grinder and rounded over the top so that, uh, to the side of the wheels of the grinder, rounded them over so that it tapers down in thickness to right about here so that it's basically no thickness on the, on the side walls and that way you can really get into the corners for dovetails. I only did it to this little quarter inch one, which all you need is just one to clean up those corners anyway. Uh, but it does match my set over there, right? There's where it sits. Uh, so very pleased with the project. It was fun. Uh, it was a good exercise in duplicating. Uh, it's the first time I've duplicated that many parts. And the biggest takeaway with that is if you are ever going to do any type of duplicating, always, 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 reference off of the single original piece and not reference in order. So always reference off the original rather than using the original to make number one, one to make number two, two to make number three, three and four, four and five. By the time you get to the fifth one, odds are you're going to have an accumulative error that makes it look somewhat different. Whereas if you always reference off the original, then you have the best shot at making it look like the original. All of these are not 100% perfect duplicates. Um, you can tell if you put them up close that they're not exactly perfectly the same, uh, but you have to get really close to do so. So uh, that was a success in my book as far as I'm concerned. One of them, I think it's the one on the far right with the largest chisel, uh, I turned this radius too, too much so that the ring just sticks out too much on the side and it it just doesn't flow well. Oh well. So that that's that's that. Um, what else? I didn't spend too much time on the top of the chisels right here. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can probably see a little ring that this didn't get cleaned up that well. And that's because all of these are just going to be deformed from the mallet hitting it over and over again. So I didn't really care about the top. No big deal. Uh, I don't think anybody picked up on it on the video as I was showing them when I was done. Uh, but you can definitely tell that these are not, they're not perfectly flat on top. They've, they've got a little bit of uh, inconsistency due to turning. Again, no big deal at all. Uh, the next thing, I turned them inside here in the garage without dust collection, which was, whew. Uh, I, I wanted to turn them outside, uh, but I ended up, I planned on turning them outside on a day in which uh, the weather was going to be clear and it wouldn't be a problem at all. However, I got a little impatient, wanted to get them done. So I was looking at the weather, it was threatening rain, but it never rained. So I was kind of like, ah, I should just put it outside and start turning it. But back in my head, I was like, man, if I get my camera out there, plus all of the, the, the whole lathe cart and all that, it'd be a mad rush to get everything back in in the event that it just started downpouring. So I decided to turn them inside with the garage door shut. Mainly the garage door shut is for keeping lighting consistency, but it all worked out in the end. Um, it'll be a little while before I do that again though, because that was a mess. Uh, and then also the other takeaway from the video, a lot of people noticed this plywood template, just a little piece of quarter inch plywood that I drilled a bunch of holes around the perimeter and I drilled them so that with the Forstner bit, the point in the middle of the Forstner bit, it was always on the inside of this piece of plywood. Um, so I have just a tiny bit more than 50% of the circle for each one of these. And then I, if needed, I can file these to where they don't have that continuation to prevent it from sitting down, which hasn't been a problem yet. 
but I was so darn tired of um, adjusting my calipers over and over again. I had two sets of calipers. My shop ate one of them. I've yet to find the second pair, um, or the second set. So rather than switching back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, I decided to, to make this little thing. And it was just one of those light bulb moments where I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's do that. And I'm glad I did. This is really handy, actually. Uh, and it'll last, well, it should last a while. This is hardwood plywood. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna stay on the lathe cart. Very handy to make. And anybody can make it if you've got a drill press and some scrap plywood on hand. So definitely recommend doing that. Uh, next up, update on my dog, Sandy. I mentioned her a couple of vlog videos ago, a few vlog videos ago. Uh, her radiographs showed that she has a collapsing trachea in two spots. Uh, nothing to be crazy concerned about. She just had a fit that particular day. Um, so we're medically managing it right now and she hasn't had any problems since then. So she's happy and we're happy. Uh, update on my nose. So it's been over two months since my nose surgery. December 29th, if you're not familiar, of 2016, I had nose surgery for sinus issues and also a deviated septum, um, none of which were a direct result of woodworking, but woodworking did affect them a little bit with my sinuses. As far as the dust in the air, I am allergic to oak, I found out after some blood work. Um, so, yeah, uh, update on the nose. The nose is... Um, just fine. I feel great. I can breathe through my nose. Um, yeah, a lot of people keep asking me how the recovery is going and it's pretty much done. I just feel great and I can breathe through my nose. Uh, I still have to be concerned with dust in the shop. Obviously, I've, you, you probably have noticed with the past couple videos and such. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't want to stop woodworking because I can't breathe. So, it is what it is. I'm feeling a lot better though. And also sinuses. So like the past, I'd say the the six months prior to the surgery, I would, I would have like two to four sinus headaches every single week. And since the, since the nose surgery, I've had one sinus headache and it was my fault for not, uh, for being around dust. So uh, that has a huge, huge, huge improvement and I'm very, very excited about it. Um, so this week, what am I doing this week? I'm planning ahead for the tables that will be in my living room, the, the living room tables that I wanna make uh, as the next project. It'll probably be not this week, but next week when I get started on them because I've got a lot of family stuff going on this week. This week, my wife's birthday is this week, and then also my mom, I haven't seen her. She lives out of state. I haven't seen her in probably two years now and she's coming to visit for a few days, and she's also bringing my little nephew, which I haven't seen since 2011, uh, who also lives out of state, and uh, I'm really excited to see them. Um, the older I get, the more excited I, I get to see family, and especially considering that uh, I live so far away from just about all of my family, so uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Maybe I can get my mom to do something here in the shop. That would be really cool. Maybe I can get something pre-cut for my nephew to assemble. I don't know, uh, I'll, I'll toss around some ideas if, he even, if he's even interested in doing something. Um, I'd love to get my mom on the lathe to turn a pen, that would be really cool. And uh, she's camera shy, so I doubt she'll let me record it, but we'll see. So anyway, that's it, just a quick little update and no project video this weekend, so I will have something on my second channel uh, that's non-project related kind of a talky talky video like this one. But anyway, you guys take care, have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Goodbye.